Mobile phones have come a long way since the first mobile phone was introduced back in 1973 by Motorola. The Motorola Dynatac 8000X was the first ever functional mobile phone that could make phone calls without a wired connection. In 1999, 26 years later, Kyocera released a mobile phone with a selfie camera, making history as the first ever phone to have a camera with the model Kyocera Visual Phone VP210. The phone was rocking a selfie camera with a 0.1 megapixels that could store up to 20 photographs on its internal memory. That in turn set in motion a revolution which brought crazy technological developments and achievements to this day. Nowadays, almost 50 years later, mobile phones have made so much progress thanks to competition, technological development, and manufacturing breakthroughs. So much so that they have pretty much replaced the need of a personal computer in our lives. The same thing can be said about cameras. When I was younger, it was common for families to have a camera in their home so they can use it for family shots when traveling or events. Mobile phones have gotten so good at photography that the gap between dedicated cameras and a phone's camera has never been so narrow. As we speak, mobile phones are relentlessly fighting for their camera share of the market, but some of their methods are not completely fair. So how do they cheat? Let's go ahead and find out in this video. One of the biggest limitations of mobile phones in photography is the fact that they need to be compact, practically sized, and a do-it-all tool. Unlike professional cameras which focus on speed, user experience, and image quality, professional cameras tend to be large and bulky for that reason. Okay, so this limits mobile phones to having small camera sensors, where dedicated cameras can have uh, sensors ranging from small to huge in comparison. These implications can cause several problems to small camera sensors like uh, mobile phones, like higher noise and low light situations, less dynamic range, lack of fine detail, or large depth of field, limited controls, and many more. Although some of these limitations are being addressed thanks to computational photography and the AI in their camera systems, one limitation in particular uh, camera sensors will never be able to overcome is the depth of field, or will they not? Well, you see, depth of field can only be influenced by changing the physical aspects of a camera and or camera lens. In other words, by how fast the lens of a camera is, by the size of the camera sensor and uh, aperture, and by how far uh, the subject is in uh, relation to the camera. But wait, what is depth of field anyway? Depth of field is the distance between the nearest and the farthest object that is acceptable in focus or sharp in other words. All camera lenses have a focusing element inside which moves so it can adapt to where the subject or the point of focus is and it will keep that area in clear sharp focus with the most amount of detail. So in this example let's say x will take a picture of y. The depth of field will make y look in focus as well as some of the things in front and behind of y. A shallow depth of field however will make fewer things to be in focus both in front and behind the subject. On the other hand, a large depth of field will make a lot more than the subject uh, in focus, both in front and behind it. And that's a good thing, right? Well, it's actually a bit counterintuitive. Having a shallower depth of field, it's a bit more desirable because of bokeh. Bokeh, also known as bokeh, is a Japanese word for blurry or haze, or the blurry parts of the image in our case. And a beautiful bokeh is very sought after in photography. Lenses with shallow depth of field produces beautiful bokeh thanks to their fast aperture. Such lenses tend to be very expensive. To give you an example, a 50mm lens with an aperture of uh, f1.8 uh, from Nikon, let's say, costs around $150, whereas a Nikon 58mm lens with an aperture of uh, 0 0.95 at $8,000. There's a lot more to lenses than having a fast aperture, but that's one of their main characteristics. By the way, large apertures are represented by a small number and uh, small apertures are represented by a large number. So this is what f22 looks like and this is f1.8. If we look at mobile phones, their lenses have become a lot faster in recent years. For example, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 
who has four cameras. The fastest aperture, which like I said will be 1.8, on a small sensor will give us the benefit of getting the same amount of light as a lens on a large camera sensor because the aperture or opening of the lens will have an impact on the amount of light that reaches the sensor as well, but it will not have the same depth of field. Again, in simple terms, depth of field is the clear part of the image which has the most amount of detail and is not blurry. Large sensor cameras can control depth of field by opening and closing the aperture. Phones can do that as well, but phones will always have a large depth of field because of their small sensor. It has to do with optics and how light behaves, but I'm not going to make this a boring physics lesson. So let's just say because their sensors are cropped to a smaller size, a crop factor applies to their aperture, which in turn impacts their depth of field. So the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra's aperture of f1.8 will be similar to f6.5. iPhone does not state the size of their sensor on their 12 Pro main camera, but I'm pretty sure it's 1 over 1.8. 7 inch sensor having a crop factor 4.7 which will give us a depth of field similar to f7.5 on a full frame because everything like i said that is differently sized than full frame needs to have the crop factor applied to it regardless whether it's larger or smaller but that's why mobile phones cannot produce bokeh because their sensors are limited by the physical size but mobile phone manufacturers are not playing fair and like I said they want a piece of the photography market so that's why they're faking the bokeh. Yep you heard it right they produce bogus fake bokeh because there's no way to cheat physics and this will have a domino effect as well. Once a well known phone manufacturer will do this a lot will follow because they don't want their buyers to be left out when they're buying a cheaper third party phone from them. But the majority of people in the world will own a mobile phone and know little or nothing about photography. There are a lot fewer camera owners out there than there are phone users be it professionals or amateurs social media sites like facebook instagram or what have you are flooded with these fake bokeh images till one day they will create this saturation bokeh will become a cliche moreover when a professional picture will be posted online a lot of people will think it was taken with a mobile phone because they used to seeing similar pictures coming from a iphone samsung or what have you now there's more to a good picture than bokeh, but bokeh is a very important aspect of photography. In the long run, this will only have a damaging effect on photography because phone manufacturers are crossing the line where they don't belong while trying to be something they are not. You simply cannot take a picture with a tiny little sensor and a small lens and make it look like it was shot on this kind of setup. Unless, of course, you cheat. The good news is, even though mobile phones have gotten so good at photography nowadays, they're still far from replacing a professional camera. Plus, a lot of phone manufacturers are not good at replicating a good quality bokeh. And often images don't look genuine nor natural. But I know thanks to this competition that has created this trend of releasing a new phone generation every year will probably lead to that sooner or later. And I wonder what will happen to camera manufacturers when it does. Thanks for staying with me throughout this video. I appreciate uh, that. It took me a while to make this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you found it useful if you did please don't forget to leave a like and perhaps even share it with your friends if you're new to the channel you may consider subscribing so this way you won't be missing any of my videos because i'm making this sort of videos all the time and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video take care now.